Welcome to season three of Craftastrophe. When I was a kid, we had a battered old VHS tape of The Road Warrior. I watched that thing over and over again. It's one of the rare films that is original, well-written, perfectly shot, and just leaves you on the edge of your seat. It's also packed with stunts that are 100% real. This movie is pre-CGI and you can feel it. And oh man, the final battle is insane. It blew my mind. So what I want to do today is try to recreate the tanker truck from the Road Warrior. If this sounds good to you, well then, let's get our craft on. Okay, I received the package in the mail from eBay. And this is my Nyleth truck. I want to convert this guy into the truck from the Road Warrior. It's a toy that could survive in the wasteland. It's built like a tank. Do you know as a kid you had the ability to destroy any toy I bought you? Ladies and gentlemen, my daddy is joining us today. And I'm getting started by bending these metal tabs to start taking this vehicle apart. You lit your sister's Barbie dolls on fire, you destroyed your Hot Wheels cars, and uh, you didn't talk till you were six years old. You were basically like this. <laughs> I'm a slow learner. You were feral. Now here's where the problem started. These stickers just don't come off easily. I mean, I think they're using some kind of industrial adhesive and then the residue is nearly impossible to get rid of. I tried everything that I had. Denatured alcohol worked pretty good, but it actually worked better when you combined it with this. There was a lot of scrubbing. Hey, you know what I found that works good at fixing problems? A can of this. Right. To get the truck fully disassembled, I had to cut the rivets out. I don't think they make toys quite this durable anymore, but I will have to fix the bumper. The steering wheel's on the wrong side. We'll deal with that. Send it to the beat. Work it to the beat. To be honest, just getting the truck to this state was a challenge. So I'm using some epoxy sculpt to make the smokestacks for the truck. And to keep the diameter consistent, I made a template. And this will help me keep the width the same. That's a fantastic shot of your hand blocking what you're doing. They can't all be winners. Once the epoxy sculpt was cured, I cut the edges to get the tops nice and flat. And this is a totally unauthorized use of my spray paint. Hmm, possibly. Hey, why are you cutting off the door? Well, because this happened in the movie. Oh man, I totally forgot about that part. If I could grow hair, I would totally get a red mohawk tomorrow. Well, that ship sailed a long time ago, my friend. Hey. In order to repair the bumper, I traced it out on a piece of paper and then just flipped it over so that I would know the shape that I needed. And now I'm following that pattern with some epoxy sculpt. And the epoxy sculpt's gonna actually be stronger than the original plastic piece. But I need more of an angle here. Hey, look at that, you can barely tell. So for this next step, I had to cut one side of the windshield out. Who brings a rock to a truck fight? Uh, this guy. Now, I had started this project about a year and a half ago, but I had to stop at this point because I just didn't have the skill level to continue. I am gravely disappointed that you haven't subscribed to this channel yet. No! 
Don't do it. Just crappy crap in videos all over. Don't listen to that guy. He's not even wearing a mask. Do yourself a favor. Subscribe. Do it. Wait a second. You gave up on the project for over a year? Well, I wouldn't consider it giving up since I'm doing it now. I put it on pause. You'd never survive in the wasteland. Probably not. I'm just trying to survive YouTube. Hmm. Anyway, I'm using polystyrene to create some of the elements for the inside of the truck cab. This would be the steering wheel. This is the glove compartment. What's that little glue that you're putting on? Oh, it's a plastic weld. It's a little bit of thin cement, but it actually melts the plastic so that the two pieces fuse together. It's very cool. If you say so. Oh, I remember you complaining about how hard it was to make the steering wheel. Yeah, I tried a bunch of different things for this and I finally settled on the top of a plastic tea bottle. I cut the center out and then added some polystyrene. Cow catcher. This is a cow catcher. Let's build one. some little welding lines by using super glue and baking soda. Now I'll add some round pieces of polystyrene for the bolts. Okay, I've used some cardstock to make a template. And what this is for is to create the little defensive areas on top of the truck they basically serve the same purpose as a battlement on a castle, which allows them to shoot arrows or throw firebombs at their enemies. Yeah, you know, it didn't end too well for those people in the back of the truck. Hey, 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 don't ruin the movie for people. Well, I certainly don't want to do that since the movie only came out 30 years ago. You know, there's something I always wanted to ask you. What? When I was like 10 years old, you made me watch this movie over and over again. Don't you think I was a little young for this movie? It's kind of intense. Absolutely not. Tinu, I was preparing you for the eventual downfall of civilization, which is running a little behind schedule for some reason. No, I don't believe that. Well, you should. Nope. Years. Years, Tinu, of daily training, and now look, you make toys. You know, sometimes I just wanted to maybe, like, throw the football with you. Hey, who taught you how to throw a boomerang, huh? Throwing a boomerang is a solitary practice. Yes, that's the beauty of a boomerang. You don't need other people. Let's get back to crafting. I was... I don't uh, even want to think of all the money that I wasted on defensive driving courses. I attached a steel mesh to the- Money down the drain. Are you done? I guess. Okay. You brought it up. I need to make three stripes on the tanker. So I made this little template with the thickness that I wanted the stripes to be, seven millimeters. And the template allows me to quickly check the thickness of the line all the way across. I chose not to airbrush the stripes because I wanted them to have a less consistent look. I didn't want them to be too pristine. some burnt umber that I made to all the interior parts and then wiping off the excess. Voila! I needed to make some extra parts for the back section of the truck so I'm using polystyrene. 
Oh, I recognize these right away. That's the air intakes that are on the truck. Uh, that's so the truck doesn't overheat because they put that big metal plate in the front. Yeah, I think that's right. And this is the air scoop itself. This was a, a tricky shape to make. I put some super glue in here and I'm just holding the polystyrene. Now that I've got it painted, I'm attaching it to the truck body with some epoxy. And this will be the little protective grill. That stops debris like crossbow arrows or body parts from getting in there. You think about these things a lot, don't you? Too much. <laughs> So I'm doing some dry brushing here, but at a certain point in this project, I just started texturing and weathering the truck. So whenever I would have a brush handy with some paint on it, I would add a little bit. And this helped me to build up layers and layers of weathering and grime, which I feel enhanced the overall effect. This is some EVA foam and some PVA glue. Boy, you craft the sure to love you and acronyms. I didn't name these things. I laser cut some holes in cardstock and glued it to the EVA foam. And this is sort of the burn protector around the uh, smokestacks. Yeah, if you grab just the pipe itself, you'd burn the ever living shit out of you. Easy. What gluing the paper to the EVA foam does is allows you to wrap it around the pipe, but also give it a bit of thickness arc welder. I don't have the right kind of equipment to put rivets back into the truck, so I decided to weld the cab back onto the chassis. And I'm not very good at welding. The welds are very messy. Luckily, uh, this is a post-apocalyptic vehicle, so it all fits. I had to purchase that welder for a home project years ago. Then Tinu got a hold of it and he made some post-apocalyptic lawn furniture. Yeah, the skull chairs were awesome. Well, yeah, man, they certainly didn't think so. She sat in that thing and got a puncture wound. We had to cut the barbecue early and get her to the ER for a tetanus shot. I specifically told her not to sit in the chair. A chair has one function and one function only, Tinu. I don't know what to say. I made a sign that said do not sit. Well, you know how your Aunt Mandy is when she's drinking. Plus, that woman wasn't exactly born with an overabundance of common sense. Hmm. So I got most of the extra truck pieces for the cab glued on with epoxy, but this truck needs a horn. So let's sculpt one. Let me take a wild guess. This is a uh, cost clay. Well, looks like somebody's been studying their craft manual. You know, it's kind of hard not to pick these things up with the constant monotonous repetition of your channel. Let's bake this. Now that the horn is baked, we're gonna sand it down a little bit. I made a little truck light and a base plate out of polystyrene in order to hold the horn. Then I added some wire pins and I'm using epoxy to hold it securely in place. This is the battered and bruised ladder that's on the back of the truck. I used heat and polystyrene to make this thing. Mac. Oh, are you gonna sculpt the little bulldog? I'm gonna try. I've always loved that bulldog. They don't make good hood ornaments anymore. You know, I can make you a hood ornament for your old truck. For the Ratmobile? The one and only. Yeah, I thought it was a good idea to put a 12 pack of Snickers under the seat in case I get hungry. But the rats took that as an open invitation to commandeer my truck. Maybe you need a cat. Adding more animals into the equation is not the answer. Now, the bulldog didn't come out perfect, but it's the best that I can do at this scale. And I've attached it with some epoxy. The hole helps give something for the glue to grab onto. Seven Sisters. The tanker in the Road Warrior has the Seven Sisters Petroleum logo. This name is based off of the seven major oil companies in the 1970s that were known as the Seven Sisters. So I went into Photoshop and recreated the logo so that I could use it with an inkjet based water slide decal. Once it's printed, you have to spray it several times with some clear coat and that stops the ink from running. Then you just carefully slide it on. 
and you can still adjust it. The colors don't look the same, Tino. No, they sure don't. And as you can see, inkjet printers don't have white ink because they're usually printing on paper. What is this gonna be? This is gonna be for a strap that they have behind the cab of the truck. I very carefully folded some sports tape and then roughed it up with some sandpaper to give it that wasteland look. Wasteland. This is a rod of iron that I want to flatten a bit. In the movie, they used barbed wire to stop people from climbing on the tanker. You can see how well it's not working in this shot. To mount these wires, they curved some sheet metal and welded it to the bottom of the truck. Now, I had to form eight of these and they all had to be identical in order to fit on the vehicle. So I made a template to the proportions that I needed. And I just kept checking this as I worked until it was right. It took a long time to get it right. The supports fit on like this, so let's weld it to the bottom. You've got to get to clean bare metal in order to get a weld to stick correctly. And we'll get rid of this thing and that. These supports are super strong. Let's add some more details to the tanker. When I own my own water rig in the wasteland, what I'm gonna do is everywhere somebody can jump on the truck and grab onto it, I'm gonna put some Vaseline. Surprise. You know, I think that would actually work. Oh, it totally would. I've tested it in real world conditions. Well, what do you mean? Well, when I was young, I had an apartment in uh, New Orleans. And the neighbor kept breaking in when I was at work. Oh, really? Yeah. He climbed the tree next door and then we grabbed the pipe by the second story window to get in. So that's the one that I lubed up. Oh man, what happened? I'm not totally sure, but the next time I saw him, body cast. <laughs> All right, back to crafting. I'm using some JB Weld to hold these little metal pieces in place. And JB Weld is so strong. And these are little pieces of polystyrene that I cut and painted like metal. And I used some sticky tack glue to literally just tack these in place. Then I came back with JB Weld after and that's gonna hold it permanently. What is this, dust? Mm, it's a pigment powder that I made using crushed pastel chalk. I learned this from Nick of CC Minis. This is black powder to simulate scorch marks. I'm using an old toothbrush and some acrylic paint to simulate some high-speed dirt and dust splatters. This is my favorite part so far. Yeah, this is fun. Now, I want this to be a lesson to all you young drivers out there about tailgating. You should never tailgate because if the person in front of you hits the brakes, you're not gonna have enough time to react. Yeah, you could lose two good hostages. How about no tailgating and no hostages for the young drivers out there? Yeah, I guess that works too. Using my airbrush to apply a fine, dusty finish. Now, in order to make a metal barbed wire that doesn't shred my hands, I just put knots into a piece of 22 gauge wire. Wrap up. I'm gonna add a few more details to the truck before I show you the final results. And I'm gonna say a quick thank you to all my amazing patrons. Now, is the final truck 100% screen accurate? No. The actual tanker in the movie has three back axles, which I've never even seen before. 
So, you know, this and a bunch of other small details are different. But you know, the whole point of doing this project was to remind me of my youth. <laughs>